Hey, how's it going, Internet? People on the Internet that are watching. Uh, so today I'm going to be doing a little bit of, I don't know, I, I'm not going to call it streaming because it's not really streaming. I'm just painting. Um, so you're in in my studio right now, and uh, I am going to be working on this piece. I'm doing a, doing a Venom piece here. saw the movie I liked it um, I think uh, I avoided I avoided watching it for a while because I thought that uh, there's probably no way that it was going to be any good I wasn't sure that you could take a character like Venom and make it into a into a complete movie um, but I, it was pretty good actually I surprisingly I, I think I watched it on New Year's Eve actually when uh, you know we were just kind of hanging out and uh, waiting for waiting for the new year to happen um, just uh, you know right now what I'm doing here is mostly I mean a lot of the painting is already done um, in terms of the uh, the basic color palette is established and then there's some I use some different textures and, and what I like to do is I'll go through the piece and I will blur or smudge with this um, with this smudge brush or this uh, mixer brush um, and then what I'll do after that is go back and re-establish some of the edges and uh, and then I just keep I keep adding a layer to do that uh, every each time I do that so um, we'll start with uh, a little bit of some of the basic shapes you want to try to work from large undetails or like big sweeps so that everything kind of is established, right? Your big shapes are established. Uh, here you can see I have uh, some references. Here, one of these is a shot from a movie, and this other one on the on the bottom over here is actually um, someone else's artwork, another painting that somebody had had created. So um, I've got a couple of visual references there, uh, but I'll I'll do these big big sweeps, these big like a loose approach and then once I establish that we'll go in with this and just kind of blend everything together and it's almost like you're constantly going back and forth between establishing you're, you're doing more and more detail with every, every pass so you're starting very loose and then you're working your way into the finished kind of detail spots which sometimes could be a little bit more fun I think the most challenging part is trying to get everything to work and to feel the way that you want it to you want it to feel in terms of the overall look of the piece um, this is a pretty straightforward thing here where I mean it's it's venom he has a certain texture to him it's the movie version of the character so I want to make sure that it reads as though it that that's what it's supposed to be I'm not really so interested in making my own my own stylized version of the character or going back and in doing the comic book version of the character I think at some point um, I established my style or my preference the way that I like to work as being a little bit more, I don't know if I want, want to say photographic because I do want I do want the work to look like a painting, and so I wouldn't I wouldn't call it a photorealistic approach. I would call it but more of but there is a little bit more realism than than there is like a stylized American comic book, which is the way that I would have approached this years ago when I was working in that in more of that style, um, but. In recent years, and I think the trend actually has moved away from um, you know that kind of exaggerated comic book look with the very linear quality with the ink and the digital colors. There are still people that do it; they do it really well. But I think, as I've mentioned before in some of my other videos, I'm not really interested in trying to trying to fit in with a trend or trying to fit in with some other 
with a, a type of style that I'm not that I don't do very well. Like I think there, I I should just probably stay out of the way when it comes to the the comic book style. Like people that are really gifted in terms of storytelling and and they can you know they can work fast and they can you know pencil in the style that is going to reproduce really well in a comic book or a graphic novel as opposed to people that are more painters that are going to take a little bit more painterly approach which is the way that i like to work it's the way that i see myself working so um what i'll what I'll do sometimes is create an oil painting. You've seen on my channel there's some videos where I'm doing oil painting. Uh, some of these are digital and some of them are a combination of the two, which I, I do. I am interested in that. I'm interested in combining traditional media with digital media and kind of using the advantages of both. It's a thing that I like to, uh, I'm really interested in doing a direction I'd like to see my work go. Uh, so that's kind of where I'm going with that. Um, and this is something new that I'm trying with the uh, with video is rather than just show like a sped up version of this, which I, I probably will move into at some point here, um, I will record just a, a, a little bit more of a speed paint. I know people don't necessarily have the patience to sit through, or the, I, I shouldn't say patience, maybe it's more, don't necessarily have the interest in sitting there watching a real-time painting. Um, but um, with my YouTube channel, I'm, I'm trying to... I think I'm trying to tailor it more toward people who are interested in that sort of thing. So I think it's just having a chat about um, just about art, illustration, or education, or training, or any of those types of things uh, while I'm painting in real time. If you're interested in that, I think those are the people that I'm really tailoring the content toward. I think there's enough people that are out there doing this as a form of entertainment, almost like a, a party trick. Um, not that there aren't some really good speed painting videos out there where you can you can definitely gain a lot. And then there are also people who are um, who are recording and then speeding up the video and then they're recording their audio after the fact at, at a different point. And I've done that before, I, that's, that's fine. But I feel like sometimes I'm actually doing double work. I feel like I'm creating a, a painting and, I, and I'm focused on that and I'm not talking. And then I'll go back and speed up the video and then talk over it and try to um, you know, have a conversation that way, which is fine. But it, it just seems to be so time consuming. This is almost like two birds with one stone type situation where I can... Um, I can be working and then it's almost like someone is in my studio or some people are in my studio just kind of chatting and talking about you know whatever whatever is currently on your mind um, you know too with this video the, the way that I'm doing this one if anybody would be interested in commenting reaching out through YouTube comments or you, I mean you could you can get in touch with me in any number of ways. Um, if you'd be interested in, in doing that, to ask questions that I can then jot down so that if this works the next time that I do this type of uh, recording, I can cover some of the specific questions that people might have. Um, and I, I, we could talk about anything, anything that you you wanna know about, anything that you're curious about, questions about my process, my work, uh, experiences that I have, um, you know, whatever would be helpful. I, I'm just, I'm really trying to focus this year on creating uh, videos that have value to people. And I think when, when approaching this, when approaching the idea of, of putting, 
content out there that is valuable. Uh, I'm trying to make these things appeal to people that were me. So when I was st when I was quite a bit younger, I'm old now, so I guess it's time for me to kind of pass pass on whatever information that I've gathered. But um, when I was beginning to try to learn things, it was almost like you had to uh, you had to unpack a bunch of secrets like nobody wanted to nobody wanted to let you know how they did things because it was almost like you were gonna threaten their position right I, I don't think that I think back then uh, and we're talking like mid 90s early mid 90s when I was you know just high school or I was just I was just uh, starting out after high school and into college I'd see these things that just like just inspired me. And I think people were a lot less free with information because information was so much more difficult to obtain. Um, you could not, I mean, there, obviously the internet was in its infancy and you know, you, you just didn't have access to that stuff. So unless you knew someone was who that, that was an artist or somebody that was, really interested in in trying to pursue what you were trying to pursue you you had to go to a library you had to try to you know find people that knew this that were willing to share it uh, you had to look for teachers and mentors that had this experience and I don't know I mean at the time it wasn't it also wasn't as is common for people to be interested I mean there was there were always people in like if I would go to a comic book store there was always there were always people there um, buying comic books and reading comic books and collecting comic books and trading comic books um, but I think as a young kid you're not like you did not approach people and try to seek out contacts that were interested in the the art aspect so I think what we find ourselves or we found ourselves doing back then was we'd go find inspiration in in this sort of medium that you were interested in so if you were into horror films you would you would just watch a ton of horror films and then you would try to like find out or figure out and decipher what how they were doing these things if you're into special effects or if you were into comic books it was like okay i'm gonna read a bunch of comic books I'm gonna study the comic books i'm gonna pour over them like they're on my mini little textbooks and then uh, whatever I could kind of figure out how they how they did certain things, and then I would just try and do them. And I I, th I remember when I was I'm I'm out of, out of college at this point. I went to a four year school and and I did uh, art education was my major. And there were people in the, the in these schools where that technology was just starting to take its hold in terms of art and illustration. And I had like these old professors who had been doing this, you know, who doing doing art for 20 plus years. And then somebody at the school at the university was asking them to, you know, teach a digital art course, a digital, you know, illustration course. And I remember this super, a super nice lady, but um, she had been there forever and she was like a adjunct professor. And she was teaching us how to use Adobe Illustrator. And I mean, I don't know if this woman had any experience with it. If she did, it was very limited. Um, and that's to be expected because I think that the program was, you know, quite, quite young. It was just in the beginning. Um, I, I just felt like she was learning things the night before she would teach them to us. And, you know, it was almost like a dead end. You're like, oh, I gotta figure out how to do this, but I guess I'm on my own. I'm gonna have to try to just figure this out because they they would give you a textbook, you know, like a manual, and just be like, yeah, so you know, you guys you need to read this chapter, and and, and that's no way to learn this stuff. I think we're so far beyond that. And it's, I mean, it's so great for people that are just starting out because you just have so many resources. If you really want it, if you really want to get after it. Um, it's right there. I guess the downside of that is when you don't have to work for stuff, 
you don't quite appreciate it I think as much as you as you can and it it's hard to tell people oh you need to you know you need to appreciate this because it's how if you never knew what things were like before then how the hell are you supposed to appreciate it when you never knew life without it you know I tell my high school students now I'm like you know you guys back in the day before the internet and they're like before the internet that's like saying before air before we had air we were just dead people couldn't survive uh, because it's something that they've always had so they they don't have an appreciation for something that they've always had they've never experienced a world without that so you know for me the first time I sent an email it was a big deal now it's just you know the way that people communicate again it's like the spoken word it's just like what well, email I mean, even now email is kind of like email why don't you just send text messages or instant messages snapchats I mean it's uh, whatever the hell people are doing now it's a you know it's always it's always a, a new thing right around the corner it's always a surprise as to like what, what could possibly be next um, so what I'm doing here, getting back to kind of the technique uh, side of this, I'm looking at my, my um, I'm using um, OBS online, oh there it is, so it's an um, online broadcast software, broadcasting software, which is awesome. I mean, I've, I've been a Apple user for a long time, uh, for years, and I, this is, I just recently built a Windows computer I, I had a had someone build it for me I didn't build it myself um, so I've kind of had to rethink my process the software that I'm using and how I'm going to be how and what kind of work I want to be doing in terms of um, you know online streaming or YouTube videos um, anyway so uh, OBS is a um, the broadcasting software that allows you to record or stream what is happening on your screen and then I have a webcam up here so that I can kind of be a talking head in the corner uh, and I also made the um, this little the little um, piece on the side there that's got some of my artwork on it and it's got my my branding on there so if if, you, uh, if any of you are interested in learning more about that I could probably record a video about how to create that sort of thing um, but I was looking at OBS trying to see how much time had lapsed. I don't want to make this thing into a, uh, a two and a half hour long marathon. It's more like, um, you know, I think the sweet spot is around between eight and 20 minutes. I think once you get, once you get beyond 20 minutes, it becomes kind of like a stretch. Like, okay, what are we, what are we doing? What are we doing here? Um, so getting back into kind of my the the way I like to work here again I started out with these big loose shapes and then what you're seeing right now is me using the mixer brush tool and it's set to a very soft edge brush and what I'm doing is I, and, and over here you can see I'm working on just one one layer um, over the top of that, so these two these two layers are the re references. So I can take those two things away, and you can you can see what that looks like. And then here is actually a a sketch. So I used a blue a blue brush and laid in basically the shapes the way that I the way that I wanted to um, lay out the piece. And then on this layer, I, I would paint. Okay, so a paint, and then um, then over the top of that I would paint on another layer I could do a little bit of that to just to kind of give you uh, the feel for it and I have this stuff a little bit more about this in some other videos I have one where I do a spider-man piece and there's one where I do a superman piece I mean I have um, there's a, a lot of videos so uh, feel free to check out any of those and you know, if you like my stuff again reach out I, I'd love to connect with people and see what what you like what do you what are you working on if there's anything that I can do to interest people to kind of help people out I think this is my way of my way of giving back or my way of 
spread and the love or paying it forward I don't know these are all ways of kind of saying the same thing um, but in terms of education and training I just I wish that I had access to things like YouTube and Twitch and Periscope and um, you know social media so that I can I can literally I mean the other day I was I don't know where I was doing I was sitting somewhere and I was watching YouTube stuff one of my favorite artists ever like growing up and like one that I wanted to emulate myself after and was like one of my heroes was Jim Lee and you know I would buy all of the books that had Jim Lee's artwork in there and I would pour over them and I would study them and sketch them and just train from them they were again they were like my textbooks that I would get for 75 cents from the local comic book store um and Jim Lee was like one of my favorites um so I would I would get anything that Jim Lee did because it was like unbelievable and a lot of it was like okay I'm trying to figure this out I really want to really want to learn how to do this how does he do it and I'm trying to figure it decipher the Rubik's Cube of you know Jim Lee and emulate it and try to learn from it and grow from it um and then all of a sudden there would be a uh, you know there would be a magazine like wizard magazine was a was a magazine at the time they don't have it anymore but it, it was like a thing and there would be a jim lee article in there and i would be like, oh there it is there it is this is like this the secrets finally finally i'm gonna get closer and closer uh so i would read those articles and jim lee's a great teacher too i think i don't know if he's ever taught but i, I think that he has the the mentality for it, and i think that he just has a, a way about him oh and there was a video um it was with stan lee actually um and this it was the comic book greats videos and it was when jim lee had just finished his run on x-men that was like sold the record number number of, of books and made millions of dollars and it was just like he was like an overnight sensation so they made these videos where they would sit down with the artist and jim lee would sit and explain his process i must have watched that video i bought that video and it was on i think i had it on cassette tape if i'm not mistaken which a uh, vhs like before dvds um if if not on dvd but i think it was a cassette tape or a vhs tape so i watched that thing and i just wore that thing out i wore the shit out of that thing i mean it was like falling apart because i watched it so much that was like a precursor to the internet so now the other day back to that original idea is i'm sitting there and i'm watching jim lee draw like He's got a webcam on his face, and you're sitting at his drafting table, and he's, you're watching him draw. And, like, as a teenager, as somebody in my early 20s, when I'm just trying to figure this stuff out, I would have, like, I mean, I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't say I would rob someone or kill someone to get it, but it was like I was hungry for that information which I think is why I appreciate this stuff so much. And again, why I think I feel the need to put some content out there where I am talking about my process or demonstrating my process, or having these chats about things, answering people's questions, um, because I think if I put that stuff out there for people like you, who knows? Who knows might be, who might be watching this and you know, who I might be able to help. And I think that that pays back multiple times. Like, I think that's just putting good things into the universe. Um, and I think I, you know, I'd like to pay it forward and reap the benefits of that, I guess. Help me help you. You're helping me help you. I'm helping you help you. And everybody's better because of it. Um, so, I mean, that's probably around my 20-minute mark for for what I wanted to do here. And um, like I said, let me know in the comments section if there's anything that, that any of you want to see or want to talk about. Oh, I did want to show you this kind of how I would how it works. So I would blend everything together like I did. And then I would pop a layer over the top of that and it would change to a regular brush. Um, and I've got, you know, some different 
different brushes here. And you're going to see that I'm going to take a brush and then again I like to I like to stay within the chosen color palette. That's a bit much, right? Kind of turn this down and get our brushes up. We got shape dynamics on. Let's go to transfer pen pressure. I like that. Um, so what that's going to do is when I press lightly, it's not only going to make the brush a little bit smaller in size, it's also going to blend it out a little bit. But it's also going to keep, I'll change the size, it's a little bit too big. It's going to keep the feeling of this like painter, like a brush, right? It's got this kind of natural media quality to it. So I'm kind of like poking and jabbing around there to, to give some texture. I really like some of these colors. Some of these are going to happen randomly, and then I could pull some of that black back inside here, get that under control, and I'm squinting down, work on that edge a little bit because I want to I want to tighten up these edges a little bit. And just lay some of that in there and kind of look over and see what's happening here. I really love like some of these unexpected little things that are happening. I mean that that to me is kind of like the way that the way that digital art digital art is like super great in some ways and I know that I kind of got back onto a kind of jump back on I said I was going to end it here um, but digital art is great because you can kind of get these like unexpected you don't know exactly what the tools are going to do and I think after painting for a long time with natural medium brushes you learn you spend so much time learning how to control things gain control of the brushes and you know what that brush is going to do you know what that color is going to do you know what mixing those paints together are going to do to a piece what effects going to have um, in trying to control it you lose sight of the experimental sort of idea of painting which is like I don't know what I didn't know what that brush was gonna do and I, I also don't know what it's gonna look like when I blend it out but that's why it's fun that's why it's fun just kind of seeing what we can what little surprises we have I mean Bob Ross was great he called it happy accidents right I'll paint uh, fluffy little white clouds over here up in the, and this mountain's going to live right over here on top of that. And then, he would, you know, he would make these mistakes. And he'd be like, well, there aren't any mistakes. They're just happy accidents. And I think that that is one of the joys. <laughs> well, there you go. Joy of painting. Bob Ross, the joy of painting. Uh, that's one of the joys of digital art to me is that there are... Uh, unlimited combinations of brushes and um, techniques and and you know, processes like you can you could spend forever and never see the same thing twice in terms of what's going on here um, and that's the beauty of it it brings the joy back into painting because you can just have fun and you can you can see what what's going to happen and, and you know I have this on a layer right so I'm working on this texture layer here and I can always go back and get rid of it right I could get, if I don't like what that's done I could just I can get rid of it I can start over um, I can lay textures on top of it and I could edit them and um, you know, until I find that magic combination or until somebody says, "Yeah, that's due. That project's due. You gotta. You're done with that." Um, and this piece I'm doing just kind of for myself, so there's really no the project's due. It's just until I decide to take the brush away from myself and 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 say, "Okay, that whatever whatever you did there, it is what it is. Let's let's move on. We can't uh, can't spend forever on this." Okay, well. Again, if this is something that you like, you want to see more of, let me know in the comments. Uh, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Check out my other videos. Really appreciate it. Um, and again, I'm trying to build a community. I'm trying to give people information that are interested in this sort of thing. Uh, and, and again, 
frame it in a way that I would have wanted to see a video like this, right? Like I would have been like, how do you, how do you digitally paint? Uh, how do you, um, how do you approach digital painting with Photoshop? What's your process look like? Picking the brain of an artist. So um, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. And uh, hopefully I will, well, let's see. Hopefully you will be seeing me again because you'll be watching the video. Take care. Thanks for watching. Like, there's like a little button that they put on the laptop or something, and then they say click it, and then you can never even miss a video. Hmm. That's if you subscribe.